Our text this morning is the uh, gospel reading in John 15. I'm going to take you back to those last two verses for a moment. <clears throat> it says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. This is our text. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Seems about just uh, almost every time I get up here to talk to you, i got to talk about something in my past because it makes me think of that stuff. And there's a lot of stuff in my past because I'm starting to feel like I'm getting old or something. But what I'm uh, remembering about this is, is how uh, uh, sometimes things look impossible when you're at the starting end instead of what you're at at the end. And uh, I was remembering uh, back in my academy days when we first got there, we got uh, uh, exposed to this thing called nautical science. Uh, You know, anything nautical has to do with going to sea. Well, nautical science has to do with navigation mostly. Uh, It has to do with the movement of ships and how you get from one place to another and how you find your way and uh, and we got four years of that, but at the at the front end, knowing nothing, mind you, because we're all kind of ignorant at, the, at that moment. Uh, the first thing these guys tell us is, but he says, but, but but when you leave here, you have to know how to get any place in the world from any place in the world, uh, whether you're in a boat or whether you're in an airplane. You got to be able to do that, uh, and you'll have tools. You'll have some electronic stuff. That's probably a lot more now than it was. I don't want to talk about how long what goal it was, but uh, the, we had the sextants that we had to learn how to use, and we had to be able to look at the stars and the sun and uh, uh, the lights of lighthouses and uh, uh, buoys in the channels, and um, that even we had to know how to find a radio tower that's broadcasting a radio signal because sometimes we could find something that way. Uh, uh, you know, looking on that at the time. They said we're going to have to be able to do that. It looked impossible. Like we, I, I didn't think that was any way I could ever learn all of that. And it, and they made us do that for four years until we got it. Because if you couldn't do it, then you couldn't leave. Reasonably, I think. But it looked impossible. It turned out though that I ended up being able to do it. But it didn't look like I was ever going to figure it out. Well, and, and this feels like this to me because here are these. Uh, these disciples here, listening to Jesus, this is, uh, he's still in the upper room here, talking about uh, himself uh, in a certain kind of way that might well confuse them. Uh, Tomorrow he's looking at the cross. And he knows that's coming. But I know if I was sitting in in the the shoes of the disciples as we sit here, uh, listening to Jesus, I would have been right back there at the nautical science thing at the, right at the beginning because the way he's talking, I, I didn't suppose I could ever do what he asks. And even sitting here today, I wonder how that works. But they had to be wondering what fruit he was talking about. He, he's talking about bearing fruit, and then they have to do that. Uh, and they have to learn how to do that, and they have to do it actually. Uh, but what's fruit? I mean, it's easy enough if you're talking about a vine, because, you know, if you want fruit from a vine, you, you got to plant what you want. And grapes come from grapevines, etc. cetera. Uh, they either do it or they don't do it. They don't have to think about whether they're able or what it is. Or, I mean, they don't have to think about what's a grape. They just do it. But it, these are human beings. Uh, and, and he's saying you got to bear fruit. Well, okay. I also wondered uh, if, if they ever did figure out what fruit he was talking about, would they even be able to do it? Because, uh, well, if you don't know what you're supposed to do, do you know if you can do it yet? Uh, is there any chance at all that if God says do something that you're going to be able to do it? Uh, sometimes he says hard things. In fact, he never tells you what you want to do. So uh, the, the whole thing might be difficult. Do, are you going to want to do it? Well, maybe not. Um, Human beings, like these disciples, are not as simple as grapes coming up on a vine. Uh, Jesus is about to go to a cross. Things must be very complex in his mind. Certainly was in theirs as they had learned so much in just that single day. John spends 
six chapters on just this one evening. And, and, uh, and everything he said was difficult. And these guys are complicated, they're not vines. Uh, it would have been difficult for them. And it's obvious enough that Jesus can see that the, the branches of a grapevine don't jump off. I mean, uh, they might fall off or they might break off or who knows what else can go on with a grapevine, but he knows that it doesn't work like that, but people might jump off the vine because it's just too difficult, he, he being a vine. And uh, there's this command to abide in him as the true vine. To, to you know, abide is a, you know, it's a, a fancy word in English for stay. I, I don't know why we always say abide. That's what it means. It means to stay. Stay in me. Stay put. Stay connected. Stay. Uh, he, he tells them that because it may not be obvious that they're supposed to do that. He must also understand that we have trouble with the whole fruit thing because he knows them, he knows you, he knows how this is supposed to work, but we don't necessarily know what fruit he means in any particular moment. Uh, what, what fruit are we talking about? Uh, some people have said, well, that means you know, bringing in new Christians, that's fruit. Well, I suppose it is, but is that the only fruit? Uh, is helping somebody with something you're having trouble with fruit? Is uh, any kind of generic sort of way of talking about good works, fruit? Uh, is good works the same for you this morning as it will be in the afternoon or tomorrow or the next day? Hard to say. Are we going to know which ones are fruit and which ones are not? Not so easy to tell. And if you did know what he meant right now, I mean, here we sit. If, if you did know what he meant, would you want to do it? I, I know that you want to do the fruit thing that he, he says to do, but you don't know necessarily what it is. So you want to do what he wants you to do? Well, sure. But are you going to want to do it when you find out what it is? Maybe not. Some of the things he wants are too hard. Some of them are too scary. Some of them are just undesirable to overcome the problem because it's a lot of sacrifice and a lot of giving things up and a lot of danger and and. and uh, he wants us to get on with it. In, in the end, the whole thing looks to be nearly impossible tasking for anyone to figure out what it is, let alone to do whatever fruit is. As it turns out, I don't think you need to know exactly what fruit is in any particular moment because Jesus knows. And, you're, and he says to abide in him, stay in him. And, and he says that doing that, you uh, not, are, are not only abiding in him, but he is abiding in you. So the two of you together will do fruit. You are his branches. He's the true vine. You are his body. You are the ones that with him do fruit. Whatever that is, in any particular moment, the, the head of the body knows. The next thing is that anybody who is doing that, I mean abiding in him and he abiding in them, bears much fruit. He just says that's what happens. He doesn't say you have to know what it is or what it's going to be tomorrow or whatever it is the next day. He just says it will happen, that you will bear much fruit if you stay in him. Because he stays in you. It isn't knowing all the time what fruit is that's important. But it's abiding in Christ that matters. And everything else follows on his words, on his mind, on his spirit, on his life in you, on his gifts that he has implanted in you, on the talents that he has bestowed on you, uh, his constant guidance that is in his word, that has been given to you. Uh, all encouragement that lies in those words uh, of the Holy Communion that sits on your altar, of the Spirit of God that lives in you and the body that is with you together, here we all sit. And there are so many more out there in the world with you. That all brings about what God desires in you. What God desires in you is fruit. He brings it about.
You need to trust that word that abides in you, that he abides in you, that his word abides in you, and that his spirit abides in you. There is other things here too. I mean, there's a warning. This is the kind of the scary part that you also get in his word, as it turns out. The warning is that uh, you have to bear fruit. Because if you're not bearing fruit, then you're going to get cast away. Well, that's a little scary until he says the next thing, which is that he, his father, cleanses away, cleans away what is not fruitful. Uh, this is one of those uh, sneaky little linguistic things, but he talks about there in verse 2 about God uh, pruning to get fruit. The, the word that's there is cleaning cleansing. And then in verse 3, he says, you're already clean. You're already cleansed. That's what he says. It's already happened to you because the word is in you. And, and uh, well, what does that mean? Well, he means he forgives you. He always means that. When he says that you are clean, he means that his word has announced that he has forgiven you, that his cross is showing you that it is finished and he has forgiven you. And that is in the word of grace that you are abiding in even now. The word of the cross, the word of the resurrection, the word of his eternal and perfect hope that abides in you. It's there now, producing fruit. You don't want to miss what Jesus says uh, also that uh, right at the end, he says that the father is glorified in you bearing fruit. Uh, and, and, and what happens is, as he said, when you abide in Christ, when you stay with him, when you attach yourself to living with him and to doing the things that he has given you, to be here, to hear his Bible, to, hear, uh, to receive his body and blood, to be uh, mindful of your baptism, all those gifts and things that he has laid uh, in your life, he says those things will make fruit. He promised them. And in that, what Father is glorified in is that when that happens, when it bears out, when God shows his fruit coming out in you as branches that are connected to that true vine, it says that it proves that you are his disciples. And in that is God's glory because he wants you to be with him. And well, as we sit here, you and me, we know we're not gonna bear fruit without him. He says that we're not and we believe him. We also know who we are, we're sinners and we're afraid and we do crazy stuff and we cause ourselves trouble and other people, but in him, we bear fruit and we're disciples. And in that is God's glory because it cannot be otherwise. Christ has done that in you. The other thing that I find interesting here is that he says, I am the true vine. He doesn't just say, I am the vine. He says, I am the true vine, which kind of uh, leaves you thinking, well, there must be some false ones. Um, I think if you pay attention to life at all, you know that there are false vines. I could read that to mean false gods, if you like, things that distract and, and uh, things that we can attach ourselves to for whatever moment of time uh, that are not what they ought to be. The true vine, when you're connected there, is actually life. Because that's, that's what vines do. If you're a branch attached to the vine, you're going to bear fruit. It's going to be alive. You're going to be alive. That's the way it works. The functionality of any branch that's connected to the vine is obvious because it bears fruit. Because it's alive and that's what it does. He's saying the same thing about you. He is the true vine. In him you must be connected. In him is your life. In him is your function in the kingdom. If you're connected to the wrong one or to nothing, it does nothing. It might look like much. It might even promise to be much. There's plenty of that kind of distraction in the world, but it isn't real. So he says, abide in me. Abide in Christ, in his word, in his spirit. And he promises you that in you he will bear fruit. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.